Want to know one of the fastest ways to increase your revenue? Stop doing these five things in your sales process now and you'll start seeing some improvement right away. That's right, I got a list for you guys. Five things to stop doing in your sales process today to start seeing more success. We're gonna break them down for you in just a second, but first of all, thanks for stopping by the Two Brain Business YouTube channel. If you want more content like this, things that you can take action on today to improve your business and move towards personal wealth, you're gonna wanna stay tuned. So smash that like on this video, ring that notification bell, and make sure you're subscribed. All right, so let's get into this. Five things to stop doing in sales. Starting with number one, stop giving up on leads too soon. What I mean by this is that when you get a lead, you've worked hard to get that lead. Why would you ignore them, not call them right away, let them slip through the cracks? That's kind of like burning a $100 bill. Probably more than a $100 bill. The average value of your clients could be a couple thousand dollars. You're throwing a lot of money away. You're working hard to develop a reputation, to be in your little circle of the world a leader. And people are seeking you out. They're finding you for your services. But when they find you, do you call them fast enough? Do you call them more than once? If they don't answer, do you call them again? Do you text them? If they don't respond or they're grumpy on the phone when they do answer, do you give them another chance? If they tell you they're busy, do you call them back at a better time? What I find more often than not with gym owners and salespeople around the world is that they don't. They don't pursue this lead much longer. If they get a hold of a person and that person says, I'm busy, can you call me back at this time? They typically don't call back at that time. And if they do call back at the time and the person doesn't answer again, they don't call again. Why even bother in the first place? You're running a service-based business. You're going to have to deal with people, part of the game. And what you have to understand about people is that you are not the center of their universe. They are the center of their universe. If you call them and they don't answer, it doesn't mean that they don't wanna to talk to you. It doesn't mean that they're not still interested in your services, having probably filled out a form of yours somewhere on your website or contacted you through Facebook, etc. They're probably interested. However, something else more important than you is going on right now, and that could be literally anything. They've gotta call their car insurance company. They're taking their dog to the vet. Their kid is sick. You don't know. So try to spend at least 72 hours and 10 contact points to try and get a hold of them. What I'm asking you to do is day one, first 24 hours, within one hour of receiving that lead, at best, that's what I'm hoping you can do, call them. If they don't answer, wait five minutes, call again. That's called a double dial. The reason we do that is if you leave a voicemail, typically nowadays people just delete it, ignore it, feel weird about it, they're not gonna call you back, right? It's just not gonna happen. If you call twice within five minutes, chances are a person will view that as being important and therefore they're more likely to answer the phone that second time. That's what we're going for. After that, if they haven't answered that second time, let's say, and you're still trying to reach out to them, shoot them a text. Just send them one quick text and all we're gonna say in the text and in this conversation is who we are, why we're calling or texting, and why they should care. That's essentially it. Insert your own script there. A basic script could go something like this. Hey, Mrs. Jones, it's Jeff with Two Brain Business, I'm giving you a call because you showed some interest in our ad and I wanna reach out to hear more about you, right? Make it about them, that's what we're trying to do. Who are they, what do they want, why do they care about it? That's the ultimate goal. And if we can discover that over the phone, we can get a lot of preliminary work done for the sale ahead of time, and it's great. If they don't answer that text, you're gonna do the same process the next day, and then the day after that. At this point, if you're keeping count, that's nine contacts. So from there, we'll leave one final call and a voicemail. This is the only time I would recommend using a voicemail. Notice we're three days in at this point. And with that voicemail, you're gonna say the same thing, the same kind of line. Hey, it's Jeff with Two Brain Business. You showed some interest in our ad. I wanted to reach out and hear more about you. Okay, that's it. And then you leave your contact number and hope they call back. Move them to an email automation so that they're still getting some email marketing and you just keep knocking on their door that way. And then when they're interested again, they'll more than likely reach out to you. We've had people on lists last as long as nine years before coming in. It does happen, so it's definitely worth keeping in contact with them in some way, shape, or form. The second thing I want you to stop doing is stop letting the prospect lead the conversation. 
Are they walking you around the gym or are you walking them around the gym? Are you directing them towards the best option or are they trying to find the best option for their budget without considering the value? So the concept here is that during the sales appointment, if a prospect starts asking all the questions, you've lost control. If you continue to ask the questions and they continue to divulge information, you're going to get closer to the true reason they're here today, the why. And that is what's gonna define the value for this service offering. And that's also gonna lead them to be more likely to sign up. Think of it this way, when you're heading in the direction of your pricing options, is the prospect asking you to show those options and asking you what options there are, how much does this cost? What do you guys offer? Blah, blah, blah. You know, if they're asking that, they're in the lead right now. They've taken control. They're in the driver's seat. Versus you saying, Mrs. Jones, would you be opposed to me showing you some options? She says, no, absolutely. Why not? You say, great. Hey, based on your goals, I feel like this option would be the best one for you. And I want to walk you through that option as well as a few others that might be a good fit. And then you just dive in, show them those options and ask for the sale the end, but you've led the conversation and that's what matters. The third thing I want you to stop doing is projecting. Stop judging a book by its cover. I think all of our parents at some point taught us that. It's a very important concept when it applies to sales. My best example of this is when I was working for a subcontracting personal training company, I had a person come in for an appointment and in the city I'm in, we have a larger homeless population. I falsely assumed this person was possibly homeless and looking for directions to somewhere. So I asked him if I could help. He said he had an appointment. And I said, oh boy, here we go, right? Well, I stopped myself right there and I said, you know what? I need the practice anyways, let's go for this. And I took the appointment, I set aside all judgment. I resisted the urge to project and say, this person can't afford this. There's no way they can start with personal training today. And by doing that, I got through the appointment treating this person like they were anybody else. Hey, that's something we should all apply in real life as much as possible, by the way. We got to the end of the appointment and this gentleman ended up signing up for a $2,000 personal training deal. That was it, that sealed the fate for me. So from then on, I never projected. I also look at projecting as the concept of you feeling like it's too expensive, therefore it's hard for you to sell it. It doesn't matter if it's too expensive to you, it matters if it's too expensive to them, and you can never know that. You do not know how much money is in a person's bank account unless they show you. So you have to assume that if a person is sitting in front of you, they're a qualified lead. For more info on that, check out another video we've got dropping on qualified leads, and therefore are capable of purchasing your services. So keep that assumption in mind, and try not to project your feelings onto others or judge a book by its cover. The fourth thing I want you to stop doing is stop using catchy one-liners and special closes that you've heard from you know, big names in sales and gurus out there. Unless, unless you've practiced it a few hundred times, you feel very confident delivering it, and you believe in what it is that you're saying. Because if you don't believe in it, you're not gonna do a good job selling it. That's a foundation in sales in general. So let's say you heard a catchy one-liner when you were re-watching Wolf of Wall Street. Try repeating it a few times, try saying it to real people, and then try saying it to maybe a seed client, like, hey, if I said this, how would you feel? And get some feedback on that. If it doesn't sound like you, it's not authentic. If it's not authentic, it's not gonna help you develop trust in this situation, and trust is necessary for this sale. So you're gonna wanna avoid lines like that. The best thing to do is to role play. You hear something cool, Try it, practice it in role play. Does it feel natural? Does it feel good when you say it? Is it something that you could deliver confidently in a real live sales situation? Practice it in a low risk environment with friends, family members, spouse, uh, teammates, things like that, and then apply it in a high risk environment after you've tried it a couple hundred times and you feel really gosh darn good about it. Otherwise, don't do it. Selling is a skill, and like all other skills, you develop it with practice. All right, so big number five, big reveal here. This is probably the most important thing, and this is probably one of the biggest downfalls I see with salespeople that I train. And that is, you need to stop letting people leave on maybe. I would rather have somebody leave on no than on maybe. Now, in my past, I've heard this termed as the be back bus, and I've used that term for a long, long time with people that I train in sales. If somebody boards that be back bus, you have to assume that's a one-way ticket and you will never see this person again. So why would you ever let them leave on maybe? Why would you leave 
the story untold. Would you read half of a novel, close the book, put it on a shelf, and just leave it there for the rest of your life, never to know the ending? That doesn't make any sense. You need to fight to find the true ending. What I'm asking you to do is simply handle the objection, or more appropriately, I think of it as strategizing or thinking out loud with your potential client. So you need to get them talking, therefore you need to do what? You need to ask more questions. If a person says, I'm ready to start next Friday, what does that really mean? Why next Friday, why not now? Find out by asking those questions. The person says, I'm definitely interested, I wanna do this personal training package right here, however, I can't start till next month, I have to talk to my spouse, I have to check my schedule, I have to do insert excuse here. They're just making an excuse. What you have to assume is that you've done a good job, hopefully, developing trust with this individual and they don't want to let you down. People don't like confrontation and they'll avoid it as much as possible. This would be one of those scenarios where they're trying to make up some excuse it's something I think of as a smoke screen. They're literally dropping a smoke bomb like a ninja and then they're just piecing out of the room so they don't have to deal with you. They don't have to hear you potentially argue with them. Maybe they've had a negative sales experience in the past and they think you're gonna fight them on this. You're gonna go get your manager and try and figure out a way to you know, wheel and deal and make it so it's the best option for them. But that's not the case, they just don't know that. So when a person gives you an objection, what I want you to do is, start with this, just agree with them. Lower their defenses, disarm them. And I do this usually by saying, I hear what you're saying, or that makes sense, or I agree. So if somebody says, I don't know if I wanna do this yet, it seems kind of expensive. That's not really an objection. I'll probably sit there for, I don't know, five, 10 seconds, see if they say something else. But if they don't say something else, I'll probably come back with, I hear what you're saying. If you don't mind me asking, what do you mean by too expensive? And then let them go. If they come back and they say, well, you know, it's a thousand dollars, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully I've presented some other options that might be a little less than a thousand dollars. And therefore I can say like, oh, you're talking about this option. Hey, that's totally fine. Why don't we do this? Crisscross, cross that thing off the sheet like it never existed. That's why I like to laminate my pricing binders so I can use dry erase marker on it. But anyways, I cross that out. Therefore, the visual's gone. They don't have to worry about it anymore. And then I'll drop down to the next best option. I'll say, all right, since we're not looking at that and you're concerned about your budget, why don't we look at these other two options, which may be a better fit? Which of those two works better for you? Let them respond. So again, just disarm them right away. If they give you an objection, hey, I hear what you're saying. Totally fine. Ask a question after that, something to give you more information. You need the whole story. If somebody says they wanna think about it, they're gonna sit on this thing. You say, hey, I totally get it. It's a big decision to make. If you don't mind me asking, what's the, the main thing that you're thinking about with this decision? And then let them talk. And then from there, respond in kind. Strategize, think out loud with them. Help them make a decision, yes or no. Again, I'd rather they say no if it's not gonna be a good fit, then to walk out the door with me thinking they're coming back. So there you have it. There's the top five things I want you to stop doing in your sales process right now so that you can be more successful. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Smash the like button, ring that notification bell so you can see when we post more videos, and we'll see you guys next time.